Where's your emergency? Hello? 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 I'm nothing but gunshots. A day after he disappeared, Wright called 911, then hung up. The call wasn't disclosed until nine days after it was made. Well, that was inexcusable. I mean, if you hear shots fired on a phone, then it ought to be an immediate reaction to triangulate where that call came from. They were trying to use basically an iPhone to find where it was, and the best they could place that spot of where the call came from was outside the jurisdiction. So at that point, they just let it go. I just wanted to walk in his, his last step. That's all I wanted to do feel what he felt. Maybe he could have told me something right then and there because he know I always been with him. Uh -uh. I wish they had killed him in my front yard. They just had to kill him. At least I could have had him a decent funeral. after Lorenz and Wright disappeared, and nine days after he placed a 911 call that echoed with 11 gunshots in the background, Wright's decomposed 57-pound body was found in a remote woodland area of southeast Memphis. Everyone wanted to know how this hometown hero could be murdered just miles from where he lived. He got along with everybody. He was, in a way, the wind blow with him was cool. He didn't like confrontations, you know, so in a way the wind blew was cool with him. Every person that I met that I didn't know, they would come to me and the first thing they would say how good of a person he was. It was more about that than it was about him being a ball player. But there was another side to write, a darker B side, so to speak. His tens of millions from his 13 year NBA career were gone a product of his extravagant spending. See, when you're as tall as I am, you need a really big bathtub. Houses were being foreclosed and checks were bouncing. By 2008, Wright was in a financial hole. He needed help, and so he turned to a childhood friend whose quick solution for Wright was to sell his personal cars to a guy named Bobby Cole, a car enthusiast and high-ranking member of a Memphis-based drug organization run by notorious kingpin Craig Pettis. Craig Pettis is a very big deal drug dealer here who was connected to the Mexican cartels. He was very, very high in the narcotics trade. Lorenzen sold cars to Bobby Cole and by all appearances hid those cars in Lorenzen's name in what is known as a nominee ownership uh, scheme you know, a drug dealer like Cole gets his money through illegal gain, and he can't display that illicit wealth openly. He's got to hide it. And what happened was the federal prosecutors here, in an offshoot of prosecuting the Petty's organization, filed a asset seizure case against a Cadillac Escalade and a Mercedes Benz that were titled and registered in the name of Lorenz and Wright. Lorenzen was talked to by the government then. He denied any knowledge of Cole getting these cars in any illegal manner. Wright told federal agents that although he did sell the cars to Cole, he had no knowledge of the car's purpose or existence of drugs. Cole eventually pled guilty to a single count of narcotics conspiracy. Since that moment, Wright's mother believes that Cole had a vendetta against her son. I told the police, goes right back to the cars. Right back to the cars. 
and see, and that's why they was mad at him, because to say this, this is my car, that's your drugs too. You finna do some time. So Lorenzo wasn't going to do that. You know, to leave that house that night, something was going on. Wright's questionable past extended beyond his relationships with Petty's drug organization. Investigators soon learned of two mysterious men carrying weapons looking for Wright and his family members in the weeks before Wright's death. There's the uh, statements of his ex-wife, Shira, who told police there were two to three men who were unknown to her who came with uh, guns. Evidently, they had these guns tucked in their waistbands, knocking on her door, looking for Lorenzo. When she told me that, I told her to call the police. All I wanted her to do was tell the police what she told me. These gunmen also supposedly went and talked to one of her sons at school. They also went to Herbright's car dealership. Some guys ran into Lorenzo's dad's car lot. He never told the police about them running into his car lot, but I told him. This was two weeks before they killed him. Like, warning, you better get him, you know, he better come on. But Wright never did leave. And on the night he was murdered, his ex-wife, Shara Wright Robinson, told police in an affidavit that around 10.30 p.m., Wright left her house with up to $100,000 in cash and a box of drugs. He was there on a track phone, which is basically a disposable type phone, that prepaid phone that is hard to trace. Drug, drug dealers like to use them. And the rest of her story was that he then left with somebody she didn't know, and that was the last anyone ever saw of him. So she places him by that statement that she gave to police in a drug connection. I think there are a lot of arguments for the idea that he was killed in some kind of drug or debt scenario because of where he was found in a remote location in the field. There were shell casings of different calibers which suggest multiple gunmen. They knew that he got on the phone and called 911. I mean, whoever did it probably thought they had to get out of there in a hurry. My personal opinion has been all along that he owed a lot of money to the wrong people and that his murder was a message that if you owe us money, you better pay us. And I think, quite frankly, the reason we haven't gotten any substantive tip was because the people that killed Lorenzo Wright probably th flew in here from who knows where, Mexico City, wherever, uh, called to meet him to collect the money. He didn't have all the money. They killed him and got on the plane and left. So I think the reason we haven't gotten any tips is that nobody really knows. I know it would have to be a heartless and gutless person to do something like that. Usually what's done in the dark come to the light. You know, that's what I'm holding out on. Somebody knows. One day, it'll come out. She called the police department and told them Lorenzen was here at my house. He didn't leave the house and her not know what kind of car vehicle he got him. Never. There was also that insurance policy that he had, the one million dollar policy that she benefited from. She should have never been given that money. Ten months later, a million dollars was gone. <laughs> 